The police say they killed these two men in self-defense. This man, who was there, says the police captured the two, formed a circle around one of them, and executed him. In the middle of a circle of police? Yes. What was he doing? He was crying. The cover-up went on for years. Now, it threatens the re-election of the governor. I'm Mike Wallace. WWL-TV, Channel 4, New Orleans. Last month, in an unprecedented move, 38 officials of the Justice Department, including members of the FBI, were served subpoenas by the Senate of the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. It is part of a continuing Senate investigation of the 1978 deaths of two young men on a hilltop called Cerro Maravilla. The police... Puerto Rico's Justice Department and the governor claimed the two alleged terrorists had been shot by police in self-defense. The Puerto Rican Senate concluded the two had been executed and that the facts in the case had been kept from the public in a massive cover-up by government agencies in Puerto Rico. They also claimed that the U.S. Justice Department, including the FBI, went along with the cover-up. The incident at Cerro Maravilla is the major issue in Tuesday's election in Puerto Rico. 23-year-old Arnaldo Rosado and 18-year-old Carlos Soto were the two who were killed. They belonged to a radical group called the Armed Revolutionary Movement, which wanted independence for Puerto Rico rather than the Commonwealth status it has now. Puerto Rico was ceded to the United States following the Spanish-American War. July 25, 1978 marked the 80th anniversary of the U.S. invasion of Puerto Rico. And Soto and Rosado came up here to this mountaintop called Cerro Maravilla, where the transmission towers of a local television station are located. These two crosses mark the area where they lost their lives, killed by police. Within hours, the governor of Puerto Rico praised the policemen as heroes. He would go on to say the two had come up here to blow up the transmission towers and cut off contact with police, the FBI, and other security agencies. He said they had attacked the police who killed them in self-defense. Carlos Romero Barcelo is the governor of Puerto Rico. Governor, from your standpoint, what's at issue here? Well, the first thing, Mr. Bradley, was a real a tragedy because the two terrorists were killed in the act of committing a terror, terrorist act. Well, Following... Correct me if I'm wrong, but when someone is killed in Puerto Rico, yeah. there must be an investigation as to why, correct? Right. Well, shortly after these two men were killed, you branded the people who killed them as heroes. So did the newspapers, Mr. Bradley. Now, I'm not no, talking but, about but, the newspapers. But I'm, I'm asking, I'm asking Mr. you. Mr. Bradley, but I'm saying, but I, you make it, the way you ask the question, so I was the only but one you, who felt they, right, they were heroes. You felt they were heroes because even nobody, before nobody, the investigation. Nobody felt there was a crime, Mr. Mr. Bradley, at that time. But Miguel Marte knew it was a crime and not a shootout, as police claimed. Marte was a technician working at the tower station on Cerro Maravilla. He was there the night before the shooting when police moved in with rifles. From the chatter on their walkie-talkies, he also knew that other policemen were hiding in the woods around the towers. The next day, just after 12 o'clock, Marte was inside the building when he heard a car drive up and then heard a volley of shots. He saw one of the policemen inside with him aim through the window and shoot. Even though the police had warned Marte to stay away from the windows, he took a look outside. I moved toward a window, and I saw on the window about uh, from five to eight agents. Other policemen? Yes. And a young guy. And a young guy. <clears throat> he was, um, they were making like a circle. The young guy was inside. He was crying. The marks in the face. Marte backed away from the window. He could hear more talking, and a few minutes later, he heard a second round of shots. One of the policemen told him he could go outside. He saw Rosado. So when I went out, I saw a body full of holes. Now, when you looked outside, you saw a young guy. Yes, very young guy. Alive? Yes. 
In the middle of a circle of police? Yes. What was he doing? He was crying. But he was alive. He was alive. He was standing up in the middle of the circle of policemen. And after that, after you saw him alive, you heard another round of shots? Yes. Marte never said a word about what he had seen. Through four investigations, two by the Justice Department of Puerto Rico and two by the U.S. Justice Department, he never spoke out. All of those investigations came to the same conclusion. Rosato and Soto were terrorists who had planned to blow up the communications towers. They had attacked the police who then killed them in self-defense. Only one person told a different story. Julio Ortiz Molina was the cab driver whose taxi had been taken over by Rosato and Soto, who forced him to drive them to Cerro Maravilla. He told reporters that when they got out of his taxi, there was shooting, but the police took Rosato and Soto alive, beat them, and later shot them to death. He also said a third man had been with them in the taxi, a man who seemed to be the leader since he gave the orders. That third man was Gonzalez Malave, a police undercover agent who had infiltrated the group and led Rosato and Soto to the ambush. This photo of Malave was taken by police just after the shooting. His finger was grazed in the gunfire. But the cab driver's testimony was ignored. Marte, who could have backed him, said nothing. Before they left to someone, that was about uh, from five to six in the afternoon, one of the agents that were inside with me, uh, police rifle, AR-16 rifle, and I said, look, Marte, remember, nobody shoot from here. I didn't shoot from here. Remember that. Don't you forget it. He told me that. Not just the police told Marte what to say. He said he was later warned many times by the chief of the Criminal Investigations Division of Puerto Rico's Justice Department. He told me, Marte, stick to the same version. One shooting... Nobody shoot from the inside, and uh, and he told me uh, if somebody ever tried to change your uh, your, uh, your the first thing you said, let us know. We put out, we put them or him or her out of circulation. That really scared me more because look, when the chief of the justice department tells you that, what are you gonna do? The U.S. Justice Department was also involved because Puerto Ricans are American citizens. FBI memos, which have recently been made public, made it clear that their agents in Puerto Rico didn't want an investigation because they thought it might embarrass Governor Romero's administration. Other U.S. Justice Department memos wanted an investigation that would include only newspaper reports published in Puerto Rico and a copy of the official report from Puerto Rico's Justice Department. And remember, that was the Justice Department that had ordered Miguel Marte to keep his mouth shut. The Puerto Rican Senate opened an investigation into the killings at Cerro Maravilla, and because of evidence suggesting a cover-up, they wanted advice from an expert. So they hired Sam Dash, who served as counsel to the U.S. Senate during the Watergate hearings. No question in your mind but that the FBI said, let's not look beyond this wall? Absolutely, and, I, and no question in my mind from the memos they wrote that they were doing it for political reasons, political in the sense that they were trying to support the police they were working with, uh, and they were not they were not willing to look do anything that might embarrass that administration. That was, those were their words.